Oh, hey there! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome! Tonight I want to talk about a topic that's a little confusing because paints, thinners, primers, varnishes, what's good, what's not so good, what mixes what, it can be all over the place. And also this question is being asked especially on my Patreon, so I thought maybe some of you might find this video helpful. Of course, before we even get to it, all the information in this video is just my personal subjective opinion. So if by any chance I don't particularly like some type of paint that you like using, well, that's perfectly okay. No need to be mad about it. So, okay, let's start with the fundamental thing. We have acrylic primers and lacquer primers, and they also come in bottles and spray cans. My personal favorite is Mr. Surfacer, 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 something like that. And yeah, it comes in a spray can and in a bottle. Now, spray can it's convenient because you don't need to pour it into an airbrush, you don't need to clean the airbrush afterwards, and it's just quick. And of course you can use it even if you don't have an airbrush in the first place. But it's a little hard to control and it smells a lot. And of course there's a lot of primer that's just not gonna hit the model and it'll go to waste. But it's convenient, it's fast, it works really well, so it's a pretty good option. But lately, I sort of found myself enjoying the bottled version. And the color itself, it doesn't really matter, but personally, as I like to use post-shading, distressing and all these techniques, a black base seems like a pretty good option, because it helps you to create all these fake shadows and also prime the model, so that's two steps done with one product. Now. Just like this one, it smells really bad, but personally I don't really mind the smell. All I'm concerned about is how it sprays. And this one, or just any other Mr. Surfacer, they spray just beautifully. Especially when you use something like Mr. Color Leveling Thinner or something similar, but we'll talk about it later in the video. So yeah, my personal favorite, Mr. Surfacer, any type of color in bottle. And 1500, 1200, 1000, doesn't matter, they're all pretty smooth. 500, that's too rough, that's more suitable as a liquid putty, and it also works pretty well to create cast textures or rolled steel textures. Then there's also Tamiya primer, which I don't have, so I can't show you how it looks, but I've had it in the past, and I've had the spray can version, but I didn't really like it, although I see a lot of people using it with good results, so maybe it was on my part, or I don't know, but when I used it, it sort of left this really coarse, like, orange peel surface. And also when I was trying to sand and polish it, it started coming off in these large chunks, so I don't know, I just couldn't achieve a smooth surface with it, so I didn't even finish the bottle, I just threw it away. So these were all lacquer based primers and let's now talk about acrylic primers. And the first one that I really enjoy is One Shot Primer from Ammo slash Steinal Res because Steinal Res and One Shot is the same product, just different label. So this one is pretty interesting because it's an acrylic based product but it sprays really well and it's also very easy to polish. It just sands really, really well. It holds on the surface, dries really fast, and the result is really nice. However, it's supposed to be a one-shot, so theoretically you should be able to prime the model in one go, but it's sort of inconsistent. It usually works like that, but for example, when I was priming the Yak Tiger with the white primer, I had to spray it with like... 10 layers to get a good coverage, so yeah, but overall very good product. And then we also have water-based primers such as Vallejo, which I had one bottle of it in the past, but I threw it away because it's this typical Vallejo rubbery substance that's pretty much impossible to sand, and when you're polishing it, it turns into this leathery skin that just starts coming off the model and it's it's just not good in my opinion. So yeah, these ones, they work pretty well. My personal favorite, Mr. Surfacer, all day long. So we have three different types. 
acrylic paints, like water-based acrylics, then the acrylic slash lacquer hybrid, and pure lacquers, water-based acrylics. Most famous brand, Vallejo. Then we also have Ammo, AK third gen, Life Color, Mission Models. Now, personally, my all-time favorite from these is probably Life Color, because they spray and also brush paint really well. And if the bottle says they're gonna be matte, they're gonna be totally matte or flat. Especially their acrylic rust set, which longtime viewers of my channel know that I really enjoy. Like, nothing on the market comes even close to that set. But also, I use Vallejos a lot. Obviously, because they have a huge range, they are pretty consistent, but I mostly use them just for brush painting, although they can spray also pretty well. But again, they are rubbery, so yeah, they're not gonna be very good when it comes to sanding or hairspray chipping. Then we have acrylic slash lacquer hybrids. Most famous one, Tamiya, and also AK Real Colors. Now this is probably my favorite type of paint when it comes to airbrushing, because they just spray fantastically. And they also chip really well with hairspray chipping or chipping fluids. They're reasonably durable, enamel thinners won't melt them, and they come in a huge variety of colors. Obviously, Tamiya, it's a... Uh, more suited for people who like to tinker with their paints and mix their own colors. AK Real Colors, they come in, well, real colors, duh. But overall, the main difference is probably the packaging. Obviously, Tamiya also comes in smaller bottles, but yeah, you're getting a lot more paint for your money. And they're also pretty thick, so you need to thin them down which pretty much means you're getting a lot more paint for what you pay. And overall, I would be a huge fan of these, but what also affects at least my personal color choice is availability. So personally, I have much easier time ordering these. I can order the full range if I want to, because my local shop just has them, you know, in stock. These are a little harder to get in Slovakia, so yeah, these ones, they've been my personal favorite for, I don't know, since forever probably. And they are very consistent, they are ultra, like, super mega high quality paints. They are something like these good old Humbrol paints, which you could open, I don't know, 25 years later and the paint will be still good. I have some paints which are, I think, about 12 years old and they're still as good as new. Yeah. Try beating that, AK. <laughs> and of course, pure lacquer paints. Steering bottle, ASMR. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Paint. They are made in Slovakia and they are pure lacquers. So what this means? They smell really bad and they are very tough. And they spray just beautifully. Probably these are probably the best spraying paints that I've ever had. They also come airbrush ready, so pretty good option if you're you know, not very keen or experienced with airbrushing and mixing your own paints. But on the other hand, you're getting a lot less paint for your money. For example, there was one situation when I was spraying a big model and I spent an entire bottle of this Mr. Paint. <laughs> And also, they used to come in these glass bottles. Nowadays, they come in plastic ones with this dropper applicator. I think it's more convenient than this. And because they are so tough, they are also more difficult to chip with the chipping fluid. So yeah, worth keeping in mind if you're thinking about them. And I sort of forgot to talk about mission models because Obviously, they're good paints, because otherwise there wouldn't be so many people enjoying them and having fantastic results with them. But personally, my own experience wasn't very good. Either they were too thick and they were sputtering when I was trying to spray a camo pattern with them, or they were very translucent and I couldn't get a good covering layer. So, I don't know, my experience wasn't very good and... Yeah, I'm sorry, but like I said, they are probably very good paints, otherwise they wouldn't have such a huge fan base, so... 
Now, once we have our paint job done, we usually need to seal it with something, so varnishes. And here, my selection is pretty narrow. <laughs> because again, my longtime favorite varnish was Tamiya. It used to be clear, then I really started enjoying the satin version, and it's a good varnish. It's very tough, it can protect even more fragile paints, like for example ammo, or Vallejo, or mission models. If you seal them with Tamiya varnish, you're not gonna damage your paint job with enamel thinners. But lately, once I tried this little magic potion for the first time, I was immediately sold. So this is VMS Satin Varnish, and it's, no doubt, no kidding, the best varnish I've ever tried. Because even though it looks pretty thick, it can be sprayed straight from the bottle, and it needs to be applied wet. So what this means is that you should sort of slightly flood the surface of your model and then let the varnish dry it'll level itself beautifully, like that's the smoothest surface I've ever achieved with any type of varnish. And there's also AK Real Colors, which is the same principle like Tamiya, so hybrid between acrylics and lacquers. They act pretty much the same, although this is a matte varnish, but for whatever reason it turned brown, even though I never used this one. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> So yeah, Tamiya all day long for paints, and VMS as a varnish. Let's start with lacquer thinners, because these can be used for pure lacquers and also hybrids. So the most basic one is probably Tamiya or Gunzei lacquer thinner, it's just your standard vanilla uh, lacquer thinner, nothing special about it. Uh, it works better than Tamiya acrylic thinner, which is the same jug, just white bottle cap. That one, in my experience, it's pretty much completely useless. I've used it a couple of times, it didn't work like at all, so now I just use it to clean my paintbrushes. So yeah, overall pretty good thinner. Also it doesn't alter the paint's properties if you're, for example, spraying it over a layer of hairspray chipping fluid. But then, if you're more about getting the smoothest, cleanest... <laughs> yeah, smoothest, cleanest paint job, then you might be interested in something like this, which is leveling thinner. And this one works with Tamiya, Gunzei, AK Real Colors, and Mr. Paint. And it's a leveling thinner. So what it means, it helps the paint to sort of level itself out, so when it's drying, it dries into a slightly smoother surface. So pretty much it reduces your chance of getting an orange peel surface. Then one step further is Tamiya Lacquer Thinner Retarder Type, which should be pretty much the same thing as this, just it slows down the paint drying time, so the paint will dry slower, which is again good if you're about smooth surface, but also it combats the tip drying issue when the paint starts building up on your airbrush needle. So, ASMR. <laughs> so yeah, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm gonna try it on the next model that I'm gonna paint. And also, this might be the last holy Mary of airbrushing if you're still getting a dry tip or whatever. So this is a separate retarder which you pour into your paint mixture. The recommended ratio is 25%, so quite a lot, so I'm not sure how long this little bottle is gonna last. Again, haven't tried it yet, but I'll give them a shot on the next model like I already said. So yeah, overall, when it comes to airbrushing, I go with this or hopefully I'll be going with this from very soon on forward. <laughs> and as far as acrylic thinners go for these water-based acrylics, we have original thinner from Life Color, which works beautifully for Life Color paints. I also try thinning Mission Models paints with it, works pretty well with them as well. And for example, I painted my entire three-inch gun carrier with Life Colors and this thinner and they performed pretty well. I was able to spray the model, 
add some you know post shading desaturation pre weathering distressing whatever and i was also able to paint it with an airbrush and the paintbrush at the same time so yeah they are pretty versatile another example acrylic thinner from ammo i tried it according to miguel's guide on youtube works pretty well but overall my experience with ammo paints wasn't very good because when i was for example painting the hooch with them for the dark yellow base coat it left me with an orange peel surface and then i had a hard time fixing that so yeah even when i was using this but interestingly enough ammo paints also thin with lacquer thinner it's sort of i don't know if that's what we're supposed to do but it works to some extent they spray a little bitter but they're still gonna start drying on the tip and all of that kind of stuff so should i recommend it probably yeah give it a try if you want to i mean what's the worst thing that can happen <laughs> and i briefly talked about vallejo paints and airbrushing obviously there are several ranges of vallejo paints there there's the standard one with no extra label then there's vallejo air vallejo panzer aces and so on obviously air is ready for airbrushing they are free thinned maybe they have a flow improver added in there or something but you can take any bottle of vallejo and when you mix it with their airbrush cleaner like yeah forget about flow improvers drying retarders and or other <laughs> flow improvers or drying retarders or airbrush thinners whatever this one works pretty well even though it's not its intended purpose it sort of makes them flow smoother they still dry relatively fast so it sort of like a flow improver and thinner at the same time i don't know i mean it's not like they're my go-to paints when it comes to airbrushing but yeah it actually works really like surprisingly well and of course when it comes to mission models they have their original thinner and also their poly additive whatever that is i i tried them i followed their official ratios i also tried making them thinner slightly thicker i was adjusting my air pressure all the time unfortunately they just didn't work for me So, I briefly talked about mixing when it comes to Tamiya paints, which are usually good when you're a fan of mixing your own colors. So, what mixes with what? Well, obviously, acrylic paints only mix with other water-based acrylic paints. So, you can mix Vallejo with Ammo, AK 3rd Gen, Life Color probably, although I never tried it, but I mean, why shouldn't it? And you can mix Tamiya with Mr. Paint, AK Real Colors, and also these new Tamiya pure lacquers, which I haven't tried yet, but I don't know, I might give them a shot in the future. And obviously with Gunze as well. So yeah, you can mix acrylic lacquer hybrids with lacquers, with pure lacquers. That's gonna be completely fine. What I really wouldn't recommend is mixing them with water-based acrylics. So try, for example, mixing Mr. Paint and Vallejo and your day is probably not gonna be as good as it would if you mix them with their appropriate counterparts. <laughs> so what's good for brush painting and what's good for airbrushing? Well I already talked about how Tamiya, AK Real Colors and Mr. Paint are my favorite when it comes to airbrushing. Yeah overall in my opinion, again, my personal opinion, Tamiya, AK, Mr. Paint, Gunze, most likely they are ultimate airbrushing paints. Because the general rule is that the more it smells, the better it sprays. <laughs> of course, combined with their appropriate thinners. And when it comes to brush painting, again, Vallejo, Life Color, ammo to some extent most of them dry glossy so yeah you know <laughs> vallejo you can't go wrong with vallejo unless you come into a situation when one paint or most vallejo paints brush just beautifully and then for example something like this lemon yellow is a complete nightmare it just congeals into a huge blob and 
it's just impossible to apply with paintbrush or anything else so i don't know maybe a faulty a batch of color maybe it's just this particular color i don't know but apparently not all paints are made equal and of course ak third gen although i have only one paint from them yeah they seem like a very good quality paints they are also supposed to be these universal paints which are good for spraying and also brush application i mean you can go wrong with them and if you're interested in these particular ones then check out panzermeister's video which i'm gonna leave up here and in the description below he did a pretty in-depth uh, review slash test of them yeah so check him out And then of course when we're done painting we need to clean our tools so airbrush and brushes and here we have multiple options when it comes to well most of the cleaning in fact i use the original lacquer thinner so for example when i'm done spraying i just clean the airbrush with the same thinner be it leveling thinner lacquer thinner or whatever you can obviously use alcohol which is cheaper i personally don't mind wasting original thinners as much so yeah and also i use lacquer thinner to wipe my brushes when i'm done brush painting so even water-based acrylics i first rinse them with water and then the deep cleaning part is done with lacquer thinner when it comes to really heavy duty cleaning then there's this but you need to be careful because it's acetone based and it can destroy the seals in your airbrush so for example when my airbrush is completely clogged up i completely have to disassemble it i wash only well most of the parts with this tool cleaner but i obviously avoid seals nozzle and so on so yeah pretty good stuff and don't try stripping paint off your models with it because you'll end up with no model in the end <laughs> and finally if by any chance you decided based on this video that you want to try some particular brand or type of paints how are you going to test them well most of the time what we can see are plastic spoons so people buy a bunch of plastic spoons and they use them as a test piece and demonstration piece about how the paint smooth how it has a very good coverage and so on which is okay but if you want to get really like comfortable with your paints and test them in all situations then I'd recommend either getting some cheap toy or probably as most modelers you might have some failed projects and you know wrecked models so it's a good idea to keep them don't throw them away you can use them as guinea pigs and the reason for that is model is not a spoon duh but what i'm trying to say is that spoons are smooth but models they have tight corners crevices small details places around details everything and that's the only way how you're gonna try your paint in all situations because you might get a fantastic result on a spoon but then you try spraying your model like okay everything is fine and suddenly boom orange peel around details or in the corner what now <laughs> so it's definitely good to have a sort of test model which you can always have at hand and try the air pressure if the paint is thin enough if it's not sputtering and so on and so forth so yeah and i think that's gonna be it my friend so i hope you found this video helpful or at least interesting to watch you know i think it was entertaining but whatever <laughs> and let me know your favorite paints down in the comments did you have any particularly bad experiences with some paints or are there any other questions which i didn't answer in this video just let me know down below Blah. let me know down below so if you enjoyed this video or it even helped you then hit the like button or if you didn't and you don't care then hit the dislike because 
I mean, I'm just looking for your honest opinion, so yeah. And I think I'm gonna see you the next week, my friends. But until we get there, let me say thank you for watching all the way to the end. And especially thank you to my wonderful, amazing patrons who make this weekly show possible. Patreon is a sort of special place because... <laughs> because... <laughs> Because it's like a magazine subscription, I'm posting there all the time with these almost daily photo updates from my workbench and all my projects. For example, you know what I'm working on right now. It's ready to paint as we speak. And yeah, I always discuss uh, things such as paints, tools, if the model is good, where are particular problems in each kit that I build and everything. I also talk about um, 3D printers and whatnot. It's it's all there and it's frequent, so that's why it's like a magazine subscription, like a digital magazine subscription. But that's not all. We also have super nice HD downloadable videos like this, which you can download, save in full resolution, and use it as your I don't know personal inspiration or whatever. It's all there. For example, the Act Tiger has over 100 of them. So that's a lot. Also, we have one week early ad free videos. So you'd be able to watch the next week's video right now after you finish watching this one. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And we also have DMs so we can get in touch and talk. So that's gonna be it for this week, my friends. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like, dislike if you didn't enjoy it. And I'll see you mates in the next one. Cheers!